Yeah. See, my, uh, my, my research group primarily has focused on uh, cancers that have uh, that uh, uh, develop as a result of a, a virus called human papilloma virus. Uh, India has the world's largest burden of uh, uh, cervical cancers, which is uh, a, a, a tumor that occurs in the opening of the uterus and is caused by this uh, uh, virus called human papilloma virus. So we've studied over many years the mechanisms by which the virus induces cancer. Uh, fortunately now uh, uh, there is a vaccine available which can prevent uh, infection by a few of the, these uh, dangerous viruses, not all the virus. The virus has about 56 uh, high-risk subtypes. We have a vaccine that covers the four most common ones and the two most high-risk ones, but uh, we don't know what will happen 20 years from now, whether uh, we can actually contain the disease, but for now there is a vaccine available. So one of our major research over the last uh, 20 years was establishing how the virus uh, uh, causes cancer. Uh, the other uh, major area which, uh, which we also worked on was cancers of the oral cavity, which are highly prevalent in this country because of excessive use of uh, chewing tobacco. Uh, over the years, we managed to uh, identify the different pathological and uh, uh, molecular pathways that cause oral cancer, but uh, we have always been unable to to find out preventive strategies. Another important area that we work on is cancers of the, the mouth, the oral cavity. And uh, this is very, very uh, common in, in our country because of the high uh, use of uh, chewing tobacco. Uh, uh, while we've got a lot of information on the pathological processes and the, uh, the molecular pathways that uh, result in the development of uh, cancers in the oral cavity, how it starts as a pre-malignant lesion and then it progresses on to invasive cancer. We've had very few uh, very good uh, studies that have looked at uh, uh, prevention of the malignancy. Uh, there is a, 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 an area of research called uh, chemo prevention, that is use of uh, uh, natural compounds to, to inhibit the progression of the disease. So once you get a pre-malignant lesion, it, is, it hasn't become cancerous yet. So if, if there is a way to stop it as it is or to make it go back towards normal, that would prevent a lot of morbidity and mortality and treatment costs that the individual or the government has to, has to bear. So we've used a, a, a very popular ingredient of the Indian cuisine, turmeric. And uh, turmeric has a bioactive compound called curcumin which has been shown over many years in many laboratories in the lab to have a very good activity. Uh, unfortunately, there were very few uh, clinical studies and the primary reason being is since curcumin cannot be patented, uh, no pharmaceutical company would be keen to do a large study. But uh, since it is a, a very potent bioactive compound, we went ahead along with my colleagues at the Regional Cancer Center in Trivandrum. We did a a chemo preventive study where we, we gave uh, in a very, very rigorous, what we call a double blind study. We treated patients with uh, precancerous lesions in the mouth with uh, a fixed dose of uh, curcumin for a year. The study was unblinded about uh, three months back and it definitely has shown that curcumin works. It inhibits the progression of this uh, uh, pre-malignant lesion. So the critics would immediately ask, uh, Indians eat a whole lot of turmeric every day, yeah. right? And why isn't that preventing? Because sometimes dietary turmeric may be even more than... Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, the fact that the matter is, while that is true, the, our body has a unique way of completely removing that, uh, the amount of curcumin that comes out of that uh, uh, turmeric that we eat. Uh, the body's uh, metabolic systems and detoxifying systems ensures that turmeric is completely cleared out. So what we would off curcumin. So what we would uh, call in 
pharmacological terms, bioavailability is not there. Here we gave large amounts of purified curcumin doses, but yet when we looked at the, the levels in the blood, they very rapidly disappeared. But it, since we gave purified curcumin sustained over a year, that must be why we got the, the, the actual clinical effect. So what we now need to do is to look for methods by which you can bypass the uh, body's metabolic systems or find out a chemical formulation that allows it to float around in blood for much longer. Or in the case of, again, pre-malignant lesions which are highly accessible, see whether you can do a, a, a direct local delivery of curcumin into the, into the lesion. And uh, we have uh, uh, colleagues who work on nanosciences and who, who make uh, interesting compounds, some interesting uh, drug carriers. To, and if you can do everything at the tumor site, then you can, uh, that's a, the safest way to avoid the. Uh, so again, uh, it is extremely interesting from a public health sense. Uh, it is much cheaper to, to prevent the cancer rather than trying to treat the cancer. Yeah. So this is ongoing. <coughs> this is just uh, this is ongoing work. Uh, we've just uh, unblinded the clinical study. The the entire uh, there's a huge amount of data, which is now being analyzed, and we hope to publish it shortly.